Hey Internet, it's me again. Um, first of all, happy belated Thanksgiving if you celebrate it, and if you don't, well, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. But, uh, I'm here to talk about a new video game. Kind of. See, recently they announced that Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow would be re-released on the 3DS in the Virtual Console thingy. And the internet went insane for a little bit about that, because people love Pokemon, and people love nostalgia, so you put them together in happiness. Um, so I wanted to do something about that, talk about it something, but I figured playing the same three games we've all already played ten years ago, kind of boring. Uh, then I remembered this, and we're going to talk about it. Sword. All right, so what this is, is a modified version of Pokemon Red. It's the Twitch Plays Pokemon Anniversary Red Edition Limited More Words thing. Too many words in the title of this thing. Basically, it's a modified version of Pokemon Red that's made to be a little harder, and has also made it so you can catch all 151 Pokemon in one cartridge. You don't need to do other things, trade with other people, you don't need other versions of the cartridge to catch various things. It's, it's, it's made it a little easier to get all the Pokemon, but a lot harder to actually complete the game. Uh, for example, if you look at the little thumbnail on whichever side of me and decide to put the thumbnail on, you'll notice that right now I'm fighting Brock. He has a level 15 Onix and a level 17 Aerodactyl, because I'm sure if you watched the show you remember when Brock caught the Aerodactyl. But that's just one example. Uh, all the trainers are like that. Even the wild Pokemon have leveled up. Everything's a lot harder. You'll have to grind a little more and be a lot more careful about who you fight and when. You have to think a little more strategically. For example, in Brock's Gym, you really want to make sure you level up your Squirtle and Bulbasaur because you're going to need it. And that's the other thing I should talk about here is in this version of the game, like I said, all the Pokemon are catchable, uh, but everything appears in the wild more. Um, it's more similar to the TV show in that aspect, where when you're in a forest, you don't just see one of two types of bug Pokemon. You see a myriad of bug Pokemon, as well as some grass Pokemon and other random ones strewn about. Uh, in Viridian Forest, for example, you now still have Caterpie and Weedle, but also Venonat. I believe there was a Bellsprout in there. Uh, Psyduck every now and then wandering around. Uh, there's a whole lot more things to catch and see. It makes it a little easier to build a decent lineup from the start of the game. So it makes it more interesting, more worth playing. Uh, the other thing worth noting, which is a slight change from the original, is that before, in the original game, when you caught a Pokémon in the wilds, if you went to capture it again, you had no indication that you had already caught it, unless you went into your Pokédex and checked. Um, now, they made this modified version of the game similar to every version after Red and Blue, where it has a small indicator above the or next to the Pokemon's name to show that you've caught it already. It's a minor thing, but it's super awesome. Especially with all the Pokemon being more readily available here, it's a lot easier to forget that you had already caught that Vulpix you just saw in the wild, or a Charmander. Um, now you've got a better way to tell you, hey, I already have that, don't do it again. Um, and I'm sure there's other little changes, actually one little aesthetic change, which again, check the thumbnail on whichever side of me it is. Uh, you'll notice that I played this on the Super Game Boy, and on the header and footer it actually says Twitch Plays Pokemon and Anniversary Red. So they even modified that little thing, which is just a tiny, completely insignificant detail, but it's cool that they took the time to do that. <clears throat> At the core of it, however, though, uh, the game is still the same game. You're still trying to catch all the Pokémon, you want to complete the Pokédex and also beat the Elite Four, uh, so you've got your two dueling storylines. Um, now you'll probably finish them both a little more in line with each other. Uh, it's not like before where you'll beat the Elite Four 17 times and still not have that last Machamp because you didn't have a friend you could trade your Machop to and then get it back from him. Um, so it's a little more fun in that aspect, you actually get to complete the game. <clears throat> I know a lot of people like me who are completionists probably one of your biggest annoyances with the whole franchise is that you never feel like you've completed the game because the Pokedex is always incomplete. Unfortunately, this is an unlicensed ROM hack, so not only will it not work on your Retron 5, but it's not going to be recognized by Nintendo as an official thing, 
and you probably won't find it in most game stores until I eventually open my own and then I'll sell the shit out of these kind of things. If I can find a website for the vendor I bought the set at the game convention, I'll shoot that down in the links down there. Otherwise, I'm sure I can at least dig up the link to the ROM, which will definitely be down in the description thingy beneath the video. And I used to have an extra copy, but I actually gave it away to a little girl that belonged to a guy who I know on a website thing. So, I can't give you a copy, but, like I said, links, so that's something, right? Um, that's really all I have to say. It's, it's a really fun game, it's a great mod to make the original game just that much better, and if you have the means to play it, I definitely recommend it. If nothing else, it'll get you in the mood to go back and actually play the originals on your 3DS when they launch. Oh, one last thing before I go. Um, the month of January, so the month after the one we're about to go into, I will not have any videos up, uh, so I guess count that at the end of like season two or however we're breaking this up. Um, but when I come back in February, I have a whole slew of new, believe it or not, new games that came out for Super Nintendo, Genesis, Dreamcast even, Game Boy Advance, a whole bunch of new stuff. I'm going to play through all those so you can see some games you've never seen before. Also, I'm going to finish up doing the collection tour like I started a while back. Also, I may have a special video on building a MAME arcade machine cabinet, so I'll hopefully have that build video up too. Just a lot of projects going on, that's why I'm taking the month to try and tackle some of those and get it filmed and just get everything together. So, I'll still be here through all of December, and then January will be off. You can still catch me over on Gamer Assault Weekly though if you want, links down there. And otherwise, I'll be back in February with a new season, new episodes, new games, and just lots of cool shit. So, I'll see you next time.